following feature presentation is part of the Skywalking Network. Hello, citizens, and welcome to the glorious metropolis known as Collectopolis, the mecca of collectible merchandise and the civic center of toy crusaders. Here we celebrate people behind the collections and stand in amazement at the glorious hordes of sacred treasures. I am Kevin Toft, and I want to welcome you to the very first episode of Collectopolis, a podcast where we celebrate the glorious tradition known as collecting. From Star Wars to Star Trek, Nintendo to PlayStation, sneakers to cosplay, and everything in between. We love it all, and we love to obsess over it. Now, everyone, please say hello to my co-host, Ernie Moreno. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of Collectopolis. We've got a lot of stuff to share with you, as seen behind me. Can't wait to tell you all about it and all about ourselves. We've got some show here, so but uh, why don't we uh, find out a little bit about you first, Ernie? Tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been in the entertainment industry for uh, a long while now, about 14 years. Uh, but in that time, I've been collecting a lot. Uh, most of my collection, I have to say, starts with uh, retro gaming. I think there's a lot of us out there who uh, maybe didn't have all these uh, cool toys back in the day, but... Mm -hmm. oof. I seem to be buying my childhood back right behind me. So love to do, love to collect Nintendo mostly, but you know, I've branched out to PlayStation. Uh, I had a, I have an Odyssey. I have Atari, a lot of different stuff. I have even, even some bad stuff in here. I got a virtual boy down here. If anybody <laughs> knows what that's all about. Um, but love, um, love also, you can see we got uh, a little bit of Marvel over here, some Star Wars uh, lightsabers from uh, Galaxy's Edge. And, uh, you know, a little, little TV and animation with my little bender back here. I, I use it as a, as a lot of inspiration for my work. Uh, I work, like I said, I work a lot in the entertainment industry. So a lot of this pop culture and referencing comes in really handy at work. We know what you collect now. So tell mm -hmm. me a little, like, do you remember what got you started? Like, where was that moment for you that you're like, oh, I need this and that and that and that and that and that. <laughs> <laughs> so like my, uh, what is it? My origin story? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's see. So the first time I remember collecting something was when I dug up my old Nintendos, uh, you know, after I had been, you know, gravitating to more advanced stuff. Like when we got to the PlayStation 2, Xbox, that kind of stuff. I was like, man, I really want to look back and play some of these old Nintendo games. Dug up my old Nintendo. And then a friend of mine, told me, hey, you know, there's this great collectible show that happens all the time out in the city of industry called wow. Frank and Sons Collectible Show. And I was yes. like, oh, it must, you know, he's like, so it's, you know, like a trade show or like a comic con. He's like, no, every Saturday, every Wednesday, it's going out there and it's just a flea market for people selling old nostalgic stuff. I went out there and dude, it, my mind was blown. I was seeing like mm -hmm. Batmobile toys that people were selling you know, just out of the package. He's like, oh yeah, I have this in my garage. I'm selling this here. I was seeing baseball cards. I was seeing old Nintendo systems mm -hmm. that people had cleaned up. I was seeing stuff that, that I hadn't even um, known was going on in like the eighties and nineties in, in retro gaming. Like I had right. no idea for a long time, 3DO was around. <laughs> I was like, uh. I mean, that might be because, you know, the price point and everything, but I was like, it's these kind of things that were happening. Uh, that was the uh, Panasonic, to... the Panasonic 3D exactly. gaming system. Yes. Okay. Exactly. These are the things that I never learned about because I was stuck kind of in the middle of the, the um, retro gaming war between like Nintendo, Sega, and PlayStation, that kind of era. I didn't know all this other stuff that was happening. And I didn't know all the other drama happening like out in Japan and Europe and whatnot. And at Frankincense was my first time seeing a japanese nintendo which is called the famicom ah so that like so after that i was collecting like crazy anytime i could get my hands on a cartridge that i didn't have like because you know you have kind of the top ones you know mario right, 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 right. you know and all that stuff but then you start collecting these really really great pieces in your collection that have huge and and just mind-boggling stories behind them well speaking of that what is an interesting piece uh, in your massive collection there what do you got well, okay, so I can reach back here. 
So this, my friends, is called Super Noah's Ark 3D or Super 3D Noah's Ark, however you want to read that. As a graphic designer, that really bugs me. But what's great <laughs> about this little cartridge is if you've ever played Doom, you kind of know what this already looks like. So if you replace, um, if you replace demons with goats and horses and you replace your shotgun with a slingshot a foot of full of food pellets you basically have this game that's it's, fantastic it's, is that an import the, it's it's a pirated game actually the way oh that this God. was created was somebody stole the source code from id software and out of spite fed it off to a third party that was making christian games for profit now it's almost impossible to do that because of Nintendo's lockout chip technology. So this is how this works. You want to play this game on your Super Nintendo with a lockout chip? You have to do this to play it. So imagine uh, any, this. Any other, any other Nintendo cartridge has to be. Any other officially licensed Nintendo cartridge will oh, work. Oh, and it just passes but, through. Oh, my it, gosh. And it uses the lockout chip technology from the cartridge to play this gem. Oh, it's, wow. <laughs> it's actually, you know, it's an interesting piece. It's actually worth quite a bit. I mean, in this condition, not so much. But, man, this goes for a lot of money because it's just one of these little pieces of interesting history that that just resonates and caused a big ripple in the that video game funny. industry. I, 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 was, I was there at that time. I didn't ever heard anything about that. So, Kevin, that's enough about me and my big mouth. Let's hear about you. Tell us a little about yourself. I also am a graphic artist. I've been in the industry for a long time, but the most notable stuff I've done in my career would be in the video game industry. Um, I started out at Virgin Games. I then moved to Sony and was part of the launch team for the PS1, Sony PlayStation. And then I did some contract work for Konami of America. I'm going to list off some of the games I did. I worked on Robocop versus Terminator for the Sega Genesis. I worked on Terminator CD for Sega CD. Uh, I did some work on Jungle Book for Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And then down there at Sony, I was on the team for the very first hockey game, NHL Faceoff. And then uh, I think I did one of the stadiums in MLB Pennant Race. We did, we did an additional level for Rally Cross. And then another title I worked on down there was Cart World Series. You know, and I'm just a huge fanboy. Okay, but now that we know that you've worked uh, a lot in uh, in the video game industry. What is it that you collect? Uh, primarily, well, it, it's a massive pop culture, but if you looked at it, if you examined it overall, you'd see mostly spaceships um, and the robots. Although there are many <laughs> other little things, you know, that I've collected, it all seems to stem from mostly the ships and the robots. Um, and then, uh, kind of to what you were talking about earlier in the way it inspires your work, it was almost mandatory for my work when I was starting out in the video game industry. Um, the first game I ever worked on was RoboCop versus Terminator. So I started buying high-end model kits of ED-209 uh, and, you know, all the, you know, like Terminator vinyl kits, these really big, and I would have them on my desk and uh, it helped, you know, not only inspire, but get ideas to look at that. So, you know, my, and my, my cubicle at wherever I worked back then was always on the tour when they were bringing the IDs <laughs> by because sure. of the collective, it, it really looked like, it looked like a small frankincense in, <laughs> Frank, I'm sorry, Frankincense, Frankincense. <laughs> Uh, in so let me, so so then this started you collecting models for work, but after that, what kept you collecting? Because we're seeing a bunch of great Star Wars and sci-fi pieces behind you right now. It's it's still it just inspires me. It's okay. So if you look, if you get a book on the on the art of a movie, let's just say Star Wars, but there's lots of them. <laughs> and you and you and you look at you look at that artwork you can you really start to say oh this is really interesting. But there's a whole other way to take it in that I in my opinion, can't be beat. And that is in holding the piece in your hand. That's very so, true. So especially when it comes to the ships and understanding some of those relationships, even if you had 3D glasses on a 3D image, it would not do what the actual 
sculpt model kit whatever you collect whatever you're collecting does uh to understand the design and there's to me that's a, that's a, that's another part of the storytelling if you look at an x-wing if you look at the enterprise if you look at uh, you know, uh, Ed 209 or even Wally, there's storytelling in the design of those things. Mm -hmm. And you can take it in, like I said, in two dimensions, but and when you actually hold and realize it, you're understanding the story on a whole new level, a way I mean, deeper level than, you know what I, I mean? mean? Just, yeah. I mean, just holding something in your hand, looking at it from your perspective and understanding mm -hmm. it's, it's relationship within itself. Mm -hmm. I, you know, there's nothing like it. Speaking of that, like what's what? Okay, so you got a massive collection. I can already see, but what's a super interesting piece in your collection? Um, I know right away. I've got my um, my oh, Darth yes. Vader's lightsaber. <laughs> so this was okay. So I'm on another podcast here on the Skywalking Network uh, called the Max Effects Podcast, and we talk about um, the special effects industry. And I've known Max for a long time. And back in 97, Max and I decided we were going to go to Comic-Con and he has a Boba Fett costume that was movie accurate. And he, we said, Kevin, you should dress up. I said, well, what am I going to go with? I'm, not, I'm a little I'm a little tall for a stormtrooper. Um, and I get my that only reference. Two, my only, <laughs> yeah, my only two Star Wars options were, in my mind, being, I'm, by the way, folks, I'm six foot eight. Mm. So mm. what are my options? Chewy or Vader? Right. We decided to go for Vader because Max had some stuff. And one of those things was this is a Highland. This is not coming through on camera very well, but I think you can almost see Oh, I can uh, see the words. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, it's scripted the word. on their Highland. Yeah, yeah Highland I see it. flash attachment. So yeah. this is one of those old timey flash attachments that went on the camera like this. And it had a large um, circular half circle thing that held a light bulb in here. And the big had the big box camera and a click. So that's how they actually made the first two lightsabers for New Hope. This was, the Vader's was built off a, a brand, not Highland, but something very similar to this that had okay. this black, black part, right? So all we added to it was this, these, these strips and this thing. Otherwise, this is what it, you know, that's what it was. And the Luke lightsaber was based off the Graflex flash attachment. And so we built this as a prop. It does not hold a blade. If you look down the center here, this is just right. uh, um, because this is where the this is where the flash bulb would sit. Would it pushes in? In fact, this this is the release. This right here releases so, the bulb. So, if I'm understanding you correctly, that is built in the same way, in the same style that they would have built the original lightsaber yes. as. That's that is essentially what they did over in England. They the, the prop guys found these flash attachments. Um, they they cut up the side of these things. And uh -huh. windshield rubber windshield wipers. That's what both Luke's and Vader's uh, <laughs> was. And, and then this is like a for a, some sort of a switch for a Texas Instruments uh, game thing. And then this is a common kind of like tube closure. And that was oh my two, that was the first two lightsabers. I think Kenobi's was not made that way. Um, I don't have all the research on that one. But um, wow, man, it's just I always love to hear about how props are assembled in a way that it's just like, I grabbed this and this looked interesting and I put together this and I had this and somehow combining that, you get one of the most iconic weaponry in sci-fi history. Yes, that, you know, you know it's, it's, I don't know if it's a happy accident or they- it, <laughs> Let's call what, it what? a fantastically happy accident. Let's call it that instead. Yeah, and it became <laughs> this iconic thing, you know, for me, I'm putting, you know, aging, not just the gray hairs. I'll tell you that I was 10 when Star Wars came out and there's really that Christmas, the, the, the one, the one takeaway, there was a takeaway from each movie, four five and six for me, but that Christmas, it was decided amongst us children that lightsabers were necessary and we wanted real ones, not, the, not toys. We thought if not we flashlights had, right, with tubes yeah, on top of them. Well, <laughs> exactly. And that was all that was available that, that year for Christmas because they were woefully not prepared for merchandising. How about that? They were not because they didn't really believe in it. Mr. Um, Lucas, Mr. Lucas gave us merchandising, didn't he? No, oh, he sure did. He sure did, but not in the kind of way that we thought we wanted. <laughs> um, speaking of Star Wars collectibles, we have a special guest on the show. We are so excited to have with us on our very first episode, Jason Eaton, an amazing artist whose work is heavily inspired by Ralph 
Macquarie's paintings and Joe John's designs. For those who have a copy of the Star Wars sketchbook from 1977, you'll be very excited about our upcoming discussion. Jason is an amazing artist who has been featured on our Star Wars stories on StarWars.com. He is known for screen accurate replica models from Star Wars, Aliens, and Blade Runner. And with any luck, Jason will show us a 3D model of his brain. Hello, Jason. Hello, Jason. Hi. How's it going, man? <laughs> Pretty good. How are you? Really nice to meet you. Really nice of you to be joining us on the show today on our very I'm, first show. I'm honored, honestly. No, so, honestly, we're the ones that are honored, man. We've seen a lot of your work, which is why we've been geeking out over the last few weeks. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, because of my who some of my friends are, Max from Max Effects Podcast, and meeting a bunch of people and online on Facebook and finding the RPF, which is the uh, Replica Pop Builders Forum, then all of a sudden I started seeing these things in my feed, this guy, Jason Eaton. And you, you see lots of people go by really neat stuff, but I started looking at his stuff and I started going, wait a minute, that is really accurate. Wait, that's amazingly accurate. And I'm like zooming in <laughs> going, what the heck? And I started following him, I started following him. Then I started commenting, ooh. <laughs> and and uh sort of just became a fan and i've watched him do several builds uh uh you know and several of his videos where he talks about his builds and i'm just sitting there watching every minute of it just going oh my god uh, it's like and that's the thing with kevin honestly because kevin is all about like accurate 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 like see these these uh the star wars uh lightsabers i have back here from disney yeah. here yeah. He has a real gripe with the, the uh, Luke mm. one that we'll oh, get yeah. into later. <laughs> but that's the kind of thing he's into. So when we saw you, we, we knew it was like, yeah. oh, we're going to have a talk about this. Um, yeah, it, it's it's funny, like thinking about what I, you know, like where I how I got to here um, yeah. in, in what I do. And I realized um, it's been about 25 years since like the internet portion of our program has happened for me. Like Ugh. I was like, I discovered the RPF uh, shortly after discovering the R2 builders group. And this mm. is back when it was like on the, the RPF was on the Titanic website. That was like a sub board, like right after it left the AOL groups. Um, oh, and, the AOL groups. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're going I mean, back up. Is, you're going back is, a ways. Yeah, oh, yeah. We're like, Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm online. You know, like those days where you're oh, paying, yeah. Were you getting lots of CDs in the mail, you know, from AOL <laughs> at that level? Go to the Blockbuster, get like 20 of those. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. we call those drink coasters is what we yeah. do. Yeah. It's just so much landfill. But uh, yeah, it was it was like a rush to realize there were people that were starting to actually identify some of the stuff that went into the making of it. And then, you know, it becomes uh, a, you know, a, a friendly competition to see who can like figure out that missing piece and I started m focusing on the prop stuff because the studio scale stuff seems so intense and yeah. scary, honestly. And then uh, I transitioned to the studio scale stuff like really earnestly, like in 2002 or three, probably. Um, hmm. And then, then yeah, it was off to the races. Like, you know, and that's it's really crazy that you're talking about that. Me and Kevin just went over kind of like our little origin stories. Like we all have our Star Wars origin stories. Oh, you know, yeah. some of us saw the movies as a kid, some as teenagers. Where does the Jason Eaton <laughs> Star Wars origin begin? Like, what was your first exposure I, to this I, whole great universe? I was four in 77 and I didn't see it on its initial release. My my parents have said they dropped me off at my grandparents' house and they went and saw it. And then when it was re-released in 78, my mom and dad took me to the local theater. I grew up in Annapolis, Maryland, and it was this little theater on, I think it was Church Circle for any Annapolitan watching, a little shout out. <laughs> um, and, uh, <laughs> or no, that would be State Circle. I apologize. It's been a while. Um, uh, and... I, I have a, a sort of fractured memory of it, I think. Like, it's kind of, you know, you, after so many years go by, you start wondering if you're, you know, sort of believing it or not. But I, I think I remember thinking the stormtroopers might be robots. Like, I knew they were bad guys. Like, and that's that's the only part of the memory. <laughs> However, like, crystal clear memory, we went to the toy store afterwards. Ah, um, oh. And my mom let me buy the land speeder and four figures. And she said, I got Luke, Ben, R2, and 3PO, which... 
I think is like the beginning of my like, well, that's who was in the speeder. So that's, how, uh, you know, I can't get anybody else. Like <laughs> I was very particular at five, I guess. That's the DNA of a collector. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's ground zero. It's, it's all, all her fault for that. Yeah. Um, and I mean, like, well into my teens there the, there were family jokes like don't open it up you'll lose the gun in the car because at some point <laughs> i had i had opened up princess leia we had a volkswagen rabbit and the gun went somewhere and we never found it and i like i don't know if it was like a you know like a it was probably a gigantic deal like a pain in their yeah. butt but like i don't remember that happening but if it's talked about like into my teens it was a it was a moment that they were like good lord so you know. so the, the first time you watched it it was only like bits and pieces that you remember seeing the first screening yeah, um, yeah. How, so you from that did you go and watch like uh empire and jedi oh yeah yeah i mean it was like a my my parents were young um they had me at like 21 so i think they were into it as much as anybody else you know like like in, who sure. would have been in their teens um and uh it, it was it was a family thing it really was like uh, I, I find out years later that uh, whenever a relative would give me a, a toy, like, you know, a passing uncle from a different town would come by, you know, you'd, you'd get a Star Wars figure because they're like, I sure. don't know what it's like. And um, it would be somebody I already had. And my dad would be like, don't open it. And he would take it to the toy store. <laughs> he would take it to the toy store and they had like a gentleman's agreement and he would switch it for a stormtrooper. And I ended up with like, you know, 10 stormtroopers that way, um, which is really cool. And I do have, I mean, by the time Empire came out, I was like fully indoctrinated into Star Wars. You know, that was my religion. You know, it, that was, I lived and right. breathed it. Um, and he came home from work, put down his briefcase because he had a briefcase. This is like a cartoon, right? Well, because <laughs> it was that time, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he and he he said, I mean, I was so excited. I, I remember like the whole sequence of events. He puts down the briefcase, opens it up, and says, "Like, what are you doing tomorrow?" And he used to give me the the comics from the newspaper every day. Oh, when nice. I got home from work, so I thought I was just getting the comics, and I was like, "What am I doing tomorrow?" I'm, you know, I'm going to school, whatever. And he goes, "You're going to see The Empire Strikes Back," and he fanned the four tickets for yes, you know, the oh, whole family. Yes, and we he had gotten tickets for the premiere at the uptown theater in dc in washington which we never went to because it was like 45 minutes away and that was you know a little much i guess and uh that was 70 millimeter and surround sound and i Ooh. i have the, the the big memories from that and I, by that time you know I, I just had completely like engrossed myself in it so i remember all about it but the uh the one thing i remember is hearing the tie fighters scream around the, the theater oh. and being like uh you know like i can't handle this excitement and my Did brother <laughs> yeah yeah i probably like twitched my brother was like like i don't think he was even two years old yet and my mom had already read the novelization so she knew the tauntaun was about to get cut open uh -oh. and she, and he watched the whole movie with a bottle in his mouth like whole, like he had been drinking his bottle and then at some point it just fell and he never let it go and was never just, like, staring. oh gotcha <laughs> and she took she took her hand to put it over his eyes with the tauntaun and he went like this and she was like uh, <laughs> you're a man uh, now i guess you know or whatever so yeah was and it then, was it the same kind of revelation for jedi like did you guys make an event out of it at that point uh, i had got, i don't remember what had happened but i'd gotten in trouble and i wasn't allowed to see it on opening day <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. yeah and that was oh. uh, they i don't i i don't think they understand how like scarring that was at the time i mean whatever it just well they I didn't knew where to hit you, you. <laughs> i don't remember what i did i don't remember how long it was i probably we probably delayed it by a week but oh, I, just knowing that my best friends at school had seen it like ah uh, i died uh, like it killed me well whatever you did uh, you probably never did it again <laughs> yeah uh, absolutely I, I did it probably the next week i was i was a brat of a child yeah oh um, well, sorry that that uh, your jedi thing was uh ooh, uh, you know uh, yeah. Well, uh, okay. So let me pose a question now because uh, this is a, a funny thing that me and uh, Kevin play. You know, when we when we uh, when we see each other, we uh, we go New Hope, Empire, and Jedi, mm -hmm. Mary, Date, or what he likes to call instead of kill, we say Death Star. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, you know the ver the, the the real word ver version of this. We yeah, we Star, yeah. War we Star uh, so Wars. So in in order, I would say. A New Hope, Empire, and Jedi, and I would say I would I'm I'm the I'm the snob that says it's Star Wars, it's not a New Hope. I like calling it Star Wars just because I'm so right engrossed in the the 1975 to 1978 77 era of of that. Um, right, I'm sure. 
but it's a new hope. I mean, like you, you can't say Star Wars. You have to be more specific. So I, you know, that's fine. Well, that's very true. I, I it's, it's, it always creates a line in the sand when, when you start to, uh, yeah, I don't know. Don't it seems guy. like, <laughs> no, of course not. Nobody really wants to be that guy, There's but it so just many happens. of them. Like it they've just got happens. it. I'm like you guys, yeah, you take care of that for the world. Sure. <laughs> But it just kind of happens, and I'm sure it happens when with model building too. Is uh, like, oh my god! I'm sure when you first started building, uh, these kind of conversations come up all the time. I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, every year we go to a model show in Kentucky, my friends and I, and it's a 10 hour car ride from Baltimore to the show, and the whole 10 hours is basically us like having like a like a like deconstruction of what socially has happened over the year, like <laughs> who who now hates who and what happened with this and why are they so wrong and why is this not being built that way you know like all the so you know what you're driving in or walking into when you get to the show right (laughs) right oh my gosh (laughs) yeah oh my gosh so how did you get started in all this like really really um and i'm talking about like when you started deciding that you're like i'm gonna build something that's really like i'm gonna build something from scratch well, I built models as a kid. And again, not to hammer home, like it was a family thing, but right. <laughs> when the Falcon came out, my parents bought it and we sat around the table and built it. Like he put the little grain of wheat bulbs in then, you know, like, right. uh, and then I, I probably built models until, I don't know, like, you know, puberty or whatever, whenever a kid <laughs> like decides I need to learn guitar and figure out what girls are. And I put yeah. all that aside and then failed and then went back to models for <laughs> you know, like whatever. Didn't fail, whatever you're married, was. come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did all right. Um, but it's a good joke, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and when I was building models as a kid, like I was impatient and uh, I made horrible product probably like, you know, like any kid. And there, were, there was a fair amount of stuff that got melted and blown up in the backyard. <laughs> with an eight millimeter camera um or super eight you know not to not to be fancy oh, well. but um, i held super eight yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but i in 93 or 4 all the kits were re-released you know like star wars was starting to sort of come back like the um the timothy zahn books had come out and we were all kind of like oh yeah star wars i remember that and um and the toys you know when they they released those like he-man sized the earth yeah. shaped people I, I got all that stuff. I, I I bought that stuff up until Phantom Menace. Uh, just spent way too much money and time. I think that's know, around like, the time they re-released the. Uh, was that the one where they released the you know enhanced or ex, you know the that was ninety seven. That was short. Ninety seven years right? after that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and I mean, like, I got the Bomar Monk. You had to go online. Uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Actually, all right. Don't I get us started, please. I have, I have an actual. Uh, uh, we we calibrated the MRI at work, and they scanned my brain and made a STL, a watertight <laughs> nice. file of this is my actual brain, and I totally am scaling it down to make like a Bomar monk with me, you know, in it. Um, but that's that's pretty far down the list. It'll happen. Um, It'll happen. It's like, how can I not? I mean, like, Are you I got... can do it six scale. Uh. I was thinking 12, but may, yeah, I mean, six scales. Oh, awesome. like 12 scales. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, but, uh, oh my God. I, I, yes. when I bought, I bought the slave one and a X wing like in the early nineties. And I, and I had been really into fine art. I worked in an art store. I started working at 13 because I was an idiot and it was like, I got to get a job you know, or whatever. Like, um, and I worked at that art store for 10 years from like 13 to 23. I used every, it was like seven moms raised me. It was like this cool, independent, cool shop. And it was accidental training for model building for the rest of my life. Cause I know how all the stuff interacts with its, each other. And like, I, there's like weird art supplies that aren't really sold anymore, but I still have some and like everything comes into play at some point. So when I was building those initial models, like in a vacuum before the internet, um, I started doing like a really more concerted effort to try to make them look good. And I, I had the art of Star Wars books as reference. Um, so I had a little bit of reference. Um, but when I became like insanely focused on it was probably 2002 or three um, when a Captain Cardboard X-Wing hit my desk. And uh, then a, it was a little later that the escape pod, it was a fan build escape pod my friend Rolando had built it uh, and then a guy wanted to release it as a kit and he's like, it's not really kittable. So they kind of broke it apart and it wasn't like ideally a good mm-hmm. master pattern, but it was, it, I mean, it was at the time it was amazing. 
Mm -hmm. Um, But then I was like, well, now we have the power to like figure out what was used. Let me see if I can just, you know, like back then, back then in 2003 or 2000, (laughs) it seems like it was last week, but it legitimately was like over a decade ago. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The internet's coming up and stuff. Yeah. We, we, no, we got it. But they used to like the guys who made garage kits would clay things up a lot so that Mm -hmm. they could put all the parts down and then clay around them and, and cast something as one piece. And I wanted all those beautiful undercuts, but that meant shaving stuff off, buying expensive donors, you know, and it just snowballed from there. And then it was wow. like, what? I'm it, sorry, what is Captain Cardboard that one? Okay, so ca- yeah, sorry, throwing out some stuff. Uh, Captain Cardboard <laughs> is a guy named Scott Alexander. Oh, okay. He, uh, he's a professional um, model builder, worked in Hollywood, uh, lovely, terrific guy. And he got an X-Wing that had some provenance from uh, the original pyro castings that were like second generation, maybe that have hmm. been floating around. Wow. Icons had icons had one, so it's basically like an icons but a kit form. Oh wow! Um, oh, so the and, icons had a pyro that they were icon, to? yeah, like parts of. I think it all came from Grant McCune's shop, um, but there was some stuff missing. And I, I uh, there's a couple guys that like, you know, gussied it up or whatever, and made it as as nice as possible uh okay. and it, it right. is to this day like i look at it and i see everything wrong with it but i have such affection for it and there's like there really is nothing <laughs> wrong with it and honestly if you build one and you have it like everybody's like wow an x-wing you know there's like there's only like 15 yeah. guys out there that are going to be like oh, sh- i'm waiting a cotton picking minute <laughs> yeah yeah and you're like all right whatever that's fine like it's a disease it really is <laughs> well i mean we all have kind of the disease because like you know as as anybody who collects anything we always get these weird looks and we're like and this is this piece that you know has this really interesting story and you're like is it worth it you know like no it's just interesting and i like it <laughs> yeah 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 i mean some of the stuff is like probably priceless and then other stuff is like valueless but i, I love well, everything for different reasons you know speaking uh speaking of prices um as right. you know I, me and kevin know priceless. Well, priceless, price. Yeah. Uh, me and Kevin know, like, we're, we're artists. We've had our fair share of, like, freelance. But um, it's always a great feeling the first time you sell a piece. Like, yeah. the first time I actually illustrated a character design for somebody and sent it off and got money, not exposure for it or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. um, what was your first commission like? Um, it was a Captain Cardboard X-Wing, funny enough. And I still know the guy that I uh, built it for. Uh I think he lives in australia if i'm remembering the whole thing correctly um and you sent I, it around the world I, oh that's yeah. crazy yeah it's nuts <laughs> um and i look at photos of it now i think i still have the photos i might have to dig into a couple hard drives but it to me it looks just awful he still loves it he's like oh it's you know, lovely um but i'm like uh, none of it's right but you know um and i <laughs> Did think you correct anything or no and i no. and i didn't know to correct anything back oh. then um yeah and I think I probably built it for a kit, you know, like buy me two and I'll build yours. Like I did ah, that. For, ah, I for see. Couple, which is like not a good business plan. <laughs> um, not that it's a business, but it's like you, you're paying yourself like 30 cents an hour if you're doing that. So, no. but you I mean, but, have but, to, you got to pay your dues. Well, <laughs> yeah, but even, even that first one, it, you just got to feel like that sense of like, I don't know, the first time that happened for me, I was like, could I make this a viable business? Kind of like you yeah, get that yeah. excitement from I, it, right? I think the answer is no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I say that with all due respect for people who do. Right. Um, it is it, it is a hustle if you're doing that. And and uh, I, I worked for Master Replicas for a while. And the owner always said uh, the easiest way to hate, to, to, turn, to turn something that you love into something you hate is to make it your livelihood. Like, we'll, uh, we'll keep that. Uh, those are very, very true words. I mean, yeah, we- yeah. I mean, I am, I am now in a very, very lucky position where I can build anything I want, like, and I don't have to sell it, like, to pay the mortgage or the rent or whatever. Right. And somebody seems to always come calling before it's even done, and they're like, "Can I have that?" I'm like, "Can I finish it?" You know, like, <laughs> oh, you know, like, oh. Um, <laughs> But that being said, I'm not really precious about any of the stuff like that Macquarie mm-hmm. Falcon I built because it's like there was this voice in my head that wouldn't quiet until I did it, you know, kind of thing. Um, right. And I do have like really vivid memories of 
opening up that Star Wars sketchbook and just staring mm-hmm. at those pictures like this is so some of it was really mysterious and weird because I didn't understand that the pirate ship was you know the blockade runner initially you know all that kind of stuff and um and so I was like I always wanted to build that weird funky falcon and I did and part of it was coming at a time where I was learning 3D uh stuff and I had a friend who was better at it and he helped me a lot with um like the main spars and stuff so I didn't sure. really do much 3D on personally at all but it was the beginning of that tool coming into my workflow um, and I didn't want to sell it. And this guy came out of the blue. I guess he'd seen it on the RPF or Facebook. And he's like, I need that. And I was like, uh, I don't want to sell it. And he's like, well, what would it take? And I was talking to my wife, I think probably that night. And I'm like, this guy really <laughs> wants it. And she's like, well, would you sell it? And I'm like, yeah, but it would have to be like life changing. And then she's like, well, what would change your life? And I was like, if it would like pay off the rest of my college d- debt, and which was like a not like ridiculous amount of money because I've been paying it off for like a hundred years Um, (laughs) but um right but it wasn't a it was it would have been like the most I would have ever gotten for anything so I threw that number I threw that number plus what the tax burden would be because I oh sure sure. I declare I'm I'm above board you know um (laughs) and I thought you know he would have been like bye and uh he goes okay yeah give me six months and I was like or whatever buddy you know I didn't believe I didn't believe it um and then like and at the time he lived about two hours away and he like true to his word showed up and wait bought six it. And months like, what is he a contract killer or something crazy. what is he <laughs> no he was just saving he was literally just saving up for it the guy oh. and he to this day I, I build things for him he's a wonderful guy just and okay. he's very passionate about very specific stuff and that was an itch that he always needed to scratch like this does, does he make you build like obscure <laughs> like build, very very build. yeah right very yeah. like no he he, he, he <laughs> he he is sort of like we're sort of on the same wavelength Every, like this, the sketchbook stuff he'll be interested in sometimes like he didn't want the the macquarie sand crawler so i still have it like which is fine oh. um but he really liked you know the falcon and he also has my tie and my y-wing the the sketchbook versions Jason, um, you will know when i win the lottery you will, <laughs> you, will you will get a phone call yeah and, and, and like and i don't I, I i don't build stuff with like pricing or to make money or anything it's like well, oh, they're sure. all they're all one-off like uh you know if if somebody wants it i'm always i'm always extremely honored i'm like wow cool um and i try to pay myself you know like more than minimum wage for what I put into it. And sometimes that doesn't sure. happen because I also bounce around a lot. So something will take two years to finally bubble to the finish line or whatever. And they're, you know, they're like, how long did that take you? And I'm like, I don't know. You know, you like, have to go back and put together. Yeah. Come, I'm try not, to figure out the hours together because there's huge gaps in between. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that, that's not my hobby. Right. <laughs> like, I'm not keeping track of that stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah. That's, what well, would you say right now, just looking around your collection, because we can see a lot of great stuff already in the background. What would be your most screen accurate piece? The X-Wing. The X-Wing? Yeah. Um, can, can... That Okay, so the, 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 the very brief, because I could talk about this for like eight hours. Um, <laughs> and we'd be here, and we'd be honestly here for it. Kevin is special. I would, <laughs> yeah. I would take yeah. it. I would take it in so, a minute. <laughs> so like the the your your very laser focused star wars fan has had the captain cardboard x-wing uh and then what everybody calls like the salzo my friend mike salzo had bought the patterns and like he modified that and made what was called the v2 and then there was a revision the v3 the v4 and then but it was always based on the pyro and i wanted i wanted the hero i wanted that x-wing that you saw on the lunchbox that i had in kindergarten right which oh, is yes. the, the x-wing with the tie fighter behind it with the you know the airbrush bolts of light of uh, the one i was always jealous of yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, everybody had a poster you know like or you know the cool kids did anyway well yeah um so and a, a extremely brief history of that is they made the pattern they made four heroes and a hero model is just something that stands up to scrutiny closer on camera. So it had mm-hmm. lights, it had the motors, the wings open and closed. Pyros are just built for blowing up. Um, and the way they built the pyros um, and, and the heroes were top hull, bottom hull. And the okay. top was a resin casting and resin was like not, I mean, it was, they were experimenting with different resins. Right different formulations because it was all kind of newish technology i guess and the bottom hull 
was vacuum-formed styrene. Like, you know, heat a sheet of plastic, sucks down over a mold, and it's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, like your TV dinner tray kind of thing. Um, and so <laughs> they, they decided that the pyros should split down um, top to uh, instead of top to bottom, side to side, thinking uh -huh. that the wings would help blow it apart, maybe. So they okay. built essentially a hero shell and then on a saw cut it and put it together that way. Um, all the noses on the heroes were put on uh, individually, like bespoke, if you will. So they're okay. all like a different location. The, the torpedo tubes are all in little different locations. They all are so hand built that they're all totally unique to each other, which wow. is like, I'm like, oh, I love that. Um, but all the pyros are pretty much the same because a master was made, all the chips were put down sure. in place in the, like that was rock solid. And that uh, that is the the castings of castings of that were what released into, you know, the general public kind of thing. And that's what everybody had had, had a, as a baseline. Um, and we knew that they were smaller, but we just didn't know how much. Um, and so there was, a, we made a V5 and uh, this guy named Mo had taken at some point an X-Wing copy, I guess. I don't know exactly what he used. I don't think it was, maybe it was completely redone. Um, and he did a fantastic job looking at photos. He's an incredible guy. He helped work on the Millennium Falcon for um, Master Replicas back in the day with Frank Cerny. Um, those two guys, Frank and Mo, are you know big deals in the studio you know, scene. Um, and he had like lengthened it, and it was beefier, and that was really close. And that was, I think, that was the V4, and then the V5. I repatterned all the wings and the engines and stuff, and we tried to make it more accurate and give somebody the option if they want to build all the different versions by leaving off a lot of the detail that was like switched and rearranged. Mm -hmm. and you could kind of pick if you want to do red one, two, three, four, whatever. Um, and the wings were hollow. They were like stacked. It was laser, laser cut acrylic and resin. So you could see into, like when the wings open up, there's those two hollows and you could see into it. Right. And, all the oh, okay. and that was something that I was like, I need that. And then right. I thought like, okay, <laughs> once like the hull is the last thing to make really super duper accurate if we can. And I, I guess I had said something to that effect on Facebook and over the past, God, over 10 years now, I guess, I have slowly become friends with a lot of the original ILMers who are all incredibly generous and lovely people. They're fantastic. And one of them reached out to me privately and was like, it's cleaning out the closet. And I found a couple X-Wing things and I see that you're Ooh. trying to make a better one. He goes, <laughs> right? he goes you know, he's like, it's, I don't know if it'll be useful, but it might be good for locating panel lines. Do you want them? And I, I just uh -huh. liked, yes. You know, like, <laughs> oh no. Okay, wait Thanks a minute. What is he that. like? Do you want him? Or he's like, hey, do you no, want no, him? No, no, no. He was literally like, uh, he oh likes the fact that we're like trying to like preserve the yeah. the original designs. Like, yeah. he, he think, yeah. he's like, that's really cool. And I'm like, that's like my, you know, it's, it's my calling or what I like. I mean, this this research dude. sounds insane uh, on the not, side oh, of you guys. He's not I done don't, yet. I don't want to take credit for it. <laughs> I don't want to take credit for it because it's, it's a village of people. There's like 20 yeah. people like standing next to me doing all this stuff. We're like this really laser focused team of guys doing this. Um, so oh, who was the gentleman you mentioned from ILM again? Uh, I'm not going to say his name. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Was, all right. One, one of the guys. Um, one of yeah, the guys. They, let's let's they're all, say, they're all kind of like secretive and squirrely about what they have, which is fine. Oh, because sure. I, I the know years, there's a lot of legality like, here. You know, I get it. Well, and I, yeah, I mean, like, suffice to say, a week later, uh, a box shows up from the the post office, and it wasn't even sent priority. And it was, I think, a recycled Amazon box. Like, it was <laughs> very like low. Like, if I had sent what he sent me, it would have been in like a custom bought <laughs> Pelican case. <laughs> like love delivered next day kind of nonsense you would have driven but, it down yourself <laughs> yeah yeah and he's not, he's like not precious about it he's like you know it's something i work on and i know this will help you and it's, it's great um that's and fantastic I opened it, I, yeah and i opened the box up and it was like should have documented it actually but it was like a bunch of newspaper wrapping a couple things um and like you know for padding it was like a bunch of grocery bags you know like mm -hmm. just you know like you would send your friends some stuff whatever um no bubble wrap i'm shocked to this day i'm shocked that that nothing was broken because there was really nothing really Detecting securing it, it. Wow. and i opened the box i like grabbed the stuff because i thought we might talk about it and the very first thing i pull out is a hero shell 
like unused production made they didn't wow look it. at that thing and it's it's super warped it's like because it sat in storage for yeah 40 like some years um but this was i said you just sent me the rosetta stone because this is every panel line and you can kind of see their panel lines in underneath the droid strip like yeah never seen um and it gives you like locations for the armature that they had made like there were little acrylic machined acrylic blocks that went over the metal and it keys into this like, I mean, just the scale of this thing is is just a great starting point. Yeah, I mean, this really sh this showed us it, the wall thickness of the cockpit. You know, right there, you've got it. Like, uh -huh. it's like immutable. <laughs> like, it's incredible. Oh. So, like, I I like had a and there's only two of these out there right now. There's another ILMer that has one, and I've got one. There's probably more in somebody's closet somewhere. Sure. But for the moment, this is. Like nobody, nobody has laid hands on something like this in our scene. So, you know, I immediately ran to whatever X-wing I had, you know, like and, and <laughs> held it up to it, and it and it only came up to like here, and we don't even have the wow. nose on it. And I'm like, ah, because right. oh, wow. if you've got kit parts, you can from photographs pretty much guess or figure out dimensions. But once yeah. you get further down here, it's all hand done and there's no point of reference part wise to figure out exactly how long it is. And it's so much longer than you would think even from photos, but like sure. you look at a photo of the one I built from the data we used with this and it, it looks right, but it doesn't look necessarily wrong to the other one. So it's really kind right. of like a weird trick of the, the you know, optical, whatever. Um, but like real hard lines here, there's like a cool step just lots of little stuff that, like, you know, nerds. So like wait me. a minute. Based on what you said, that's a hero shell, not a pyro. Yeah. No, this is a hero you shell. You restored a pyro, too. I restored a pyro. And the, the pyro that I restored was basically a casting just like this, but cut. And Did they also, match up? What, what, yeah, yeah. Well, also in that box, I got half a pyro shell. Oh. <laughs> Which, Whoa. And this is what he thought would be like most helpful because it gives all the panel lines. Yeah. Right. And again, this is this is also crazy warped. Like it it takes a oh uh, yeah. Um, but it shows you like what they were thinking with construction and stuff. And, and you could tell that's a cast because it has the nose already placed on it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's like this is literally like eggshell. This was a foamed resin that was designed to break apart as easily as possible. So I'm shocked. Oh. I'm shocked it didn't break. In his possession, and I'm absolutely shocked it didn't break. Uh, being mailed, you know, I was like, "Good lord!" It was definitely one of those. Like, I don't trust the post office at all. These days. <laughs> right. But even, right. Even like three years ago, I was like, "No." Um, I see how they are in Baltimore, but um, Is and it... then I also got wings. Oh, they're pot. They're wow. Um, pyro wings. I think NG might mean no good. I'm not entirely sure. But the great part about this is it's the white. Like, there's a lot of debate people will like scream and yell at each other sometimes over like, how did they paint them? Uh, the first wave were painted white. Um, like it's not like bone white, but well, it might be right, bone white. Right. But they dirty them up, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's also real quick aside, it's really funny. Like there was also a lot of debate on how they built them and how and then how they painted them. And you would see in print or talk to one of the guys and they would say, we primed it black and then we painted it with uh, white lacquer. Or another one would be like, we primed it gray and we painted it with hot rod white, which is kind of a yellowy white. It's a totally different white from that one. Right. Um, and there'd be like three or four different answers. And you're like, I guess they're just misremembering. But then we come to find out talking to them further about it and just putting all the stories together. They were experimenting with resins. They were experimenting with production uh, like techniques. So uh -huh. that guy did paint it white over black primer because that's what he tried. And that guy did paint it gray primer with a hot rod white they were right. all different Do, wait a minute does different. that mean that because that's how that's painted did is that an indication that that was used on screen or well, that that this? doesn't necessarily yeah no 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 this was oh, okay. this is this was made in like 75 or 6 pro probably 76 okay um, and just was cast off and taken home for sentimental purposes or whatever gotcha okay okay yeah all right yeah. that's I, I that's do. an amazing amount of accuracy for the painting too it's just Wow, the I do have a, a shard of a Y wing that was also thrown in that box, uh, and <laughs> and we we ID'd it. It's it's what we call triangles. It's one of the pyro Y wings, and you can see it explode on screen. <laughs> like I'm like, uh, like oh, that is wow. that wow. is cool, that is screen man. Oh. that is screen used. It even still has the wire like, that they hung. Yeah, 
It's just sitting. It's just sitting on a shelf. Like oh. it's crazy. Yeah, I'm sure that, if you the, framed it, the, the somebody would be like, "Why do you have a piece of? I don't know what that is." Like like, it looks like absolute <laughs> trash to, to 99.99 percent of the population. Yeah. All right. All the research that's on fantastic. the X-wing to date yeah. is the the one that's on your website right now. Is that mm -hmm. the one that's the got Ford. all? Right, that has the the cumulative data from everything you pulled. Is that? <laughs> yeah. Yes and no. So uh, again, with the help from my friend Josh and Andre, mostly uh, Josh is an amazing uh, like CAD designer. Um, I had these two hulls uh, laser scanned at great expense uh, by a company <laughs> yeah. nearby that has like one of those really like couple hundred thousand dollar scanners. It's like on a big robot arm. Um, so it was like stupid high res like you could see like the dust in the scan uh, wow. which was unnecessary but i'm like you know like oh, no. <laughs> um, i fully endorse he it took, yeah he took them and straightened them up um there's actually a link on that red four page on my website to his blog where he talks about the process so you could just click through his blog on it to see where we got to to what we uh, ended up uh using and that whole thing is only like a, a midway point because I want to make a 112th X-Wing. And I realized if we get any of it wrong, it magnifies twice and it's going right. to look like, you're wow. like a toy. Um, so that red four, yes and no, because some of the red 12 elements that we're working on where I'm like up detailing it, I went ahead and printed in 124th to see if it would work and it did. And we just threw it onto the, that model. So like I do these things that must enrage some people because <laughs> like it's accurate, <laughs> And then it's like super not accurate. Well, but like, once you talk to the guys that made the originals and they're like, I would have done that. Like if we had the time or the technology and then I'm like, yeah, all right. Like, that oh makes man. Sense. Okay. So you're I mean, getting, getting, getting an right? okay from somebody like that. Yeah. Holy crap, that's gotta please. be so like, oh, boost, it's boost nuts. Diego. It's nuts. Uh, I had, I was talking one time, I don't, name dropping. I was talking Do to it. Lord. Do Lord, it, yeah. please. <laughs> I, was talking to, I was talking to Lord Peterson and he one time about all this stuff and he's like, you know, I would have hired you. He's like, you were just like 10 to 15 years too young and on the wrong coast. Uh, and born I'm like, in the wrong century kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, right? it, it's it's the kind of thing you hear and like your heart flutters a little bit because it's like, that's the best thing that can be said, you know, in sure. the year 2020 or whatever. Yeah. What are we in 2021? 2021. It all blurs month, together because of, of COVID. COVID. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh my God. Well, that pretty but much like, says it all though, doesn't it? Yeah, that was like, can I put that on my CV? <laughs> like i need to put that in my resume like that's Absolutely. amazing you know it's yeah. it's it's really crazy that you say something like that because it's you know it, it when it comes to pieces that were on screen that were used and everything a lot of people can talk about them can scrutinize and everything but you have a that sand crawler piece that you mentioned before mm -hmm. that i think only has maybe three or four reference photos and you built the entire thing that's my favorite thing to do now so like <laughs> it kind of like building that stuff was was partly well like my hands are really bad I've had like five hand surgeries and like I basically used them up <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, no. I, my first carpal tunnel surgery the doctor who'd been doing this for like he was like a Vietnam like war doctor and he's been doing this for like you know 100 years and he's like you have the thickest tendon I've ever seen I'm like thank you like, <laughs> and he's, like he's like no that's, he's like he's, he's like do you crush rocks with your hand I'm like well not anymore you know like, <laughs> like hands of an 80 year old so it, it forced me it gave me a kick in the pants to learn 3d stuff but mm -hmm. the side product of that is like you know, I, I live in a house with a, my shop is in the basement. Um, so I, I don't have a lathe. I don't have a mill. Um, I don't have the space for that kind of stuff. I don't have the money yeah. for this stuff, but like the 3d printer, I have a, I got a really nice one. I got one of the form labs ones, which is kind of like the set it and forget it. Like it does not tinker. You don't have to tinker with it and sure. nothing against any of the, the other ones, but like, I just want to have that be a tool that, you know, barf stuff out and doesn't fail. Mm -hmm. It's totally. way more expensive to run, unfortunately, but um, it does pay for itself if I sell a piece. So I'm like, eh, yeah, yeah, it um, works out. Yeah, it's 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 a total, you know, everybody has to make that determination for themselves. But it allowed me to design stuff that's always been in my head that I knew I could probably do if I had access to the tools or if I had experience in like milling or something. Um <laughs> And I just couldn't do it by hand and I can't do it by hand now. Like they're just not strong enough to really like work 
putty or sand to, like <laughs> i think i sanded my hands to death <laughs> essentially oh, over the shit. years <laughs> um it's, the happy ending to that is that like yeah now the robot does my bidding you know I'm like oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh and it lets Finally. me make things like the sand crawler and the thing i love about that yeah there's a painting and some sketches like thumbnails and yeah. i get to make stuff up and the making stuff up part totally comes from that I want to I want to be an ILMer as a kid thing. Sure. And I knew part of that process was yeah, they had to make something from a a, a drawing or a blueprint or a you know, production sketch or whatever, but they got to make stuff up. And that was so, that was so romantic in my head. I'm like, you know, talking to someone like Bill George, I'm like, so when you're making that thing, you just glued stuff down and then they mimic that on set. Like and then that was on the toy and that's just the way it looks now and he's like, yeah. Like sometimes wow. you had to change it, but he's like, yeah, you just kind of get in the flow. And, and like, to me, that was like, oh, that's so cool. You know, like, <laughs> and it's so much faster. Good Lord. It's so much faster than staring at photographs and realizing you need to go buy a $400 model kit on eBay, you know, from <laughs> whatever. And you're like, oh God. And you need well, like five I, of them. And then you're like, oh. <laughs> I think the thing that's, that's so interesting to me is you look at the sand crawler that you did, that's based off the McQuarrie printing or the sketchbook. You kind of, it's a, it's a hodgepodge, but essentially yeah. uh, it, it's what if George had said, uh, I like that one. Do that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. That's Kevin's <laughs> impression of George Lucas. It's yeah, pretty yeah. dead on that, actually. That looks like pretty it. good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, faster and more intense, Jason. Faster and more intense, yeah. The little, <laughs> the wonderful, the wonderful stamp that's on some of the the, the drawings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. What you and produce. it's like it's like it is. I, I I do feel that too. And like I've, my big thing is putting little stuff in other areas. So if you're if oh. you're a weirdo with a pen light, you're rewarded by looking down <laughs> like whatever. So like on the Macquarie Falcon, if you angle your eye and you look through the cockpit into the hallway the hallway continues just a little bit and they're like i have an led in there shining like the led itself is being held up by like a piece of styrene it's like not anything beautiful it's very utilitarian but it's but just casting light on this bendy piece so that you can see it and uh the the sand crawler was like a smorgasbord for that like i've got i've got a jawa on a gantry in like the engine bay in the back mm -hmm. And uh -huh. he's holding like a wrench because it's the Galoob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, that's the size of those guys. Um, and there's like a full cockpit. But in on the gantry behind him on the floor is a teddy bear. Um, <laughs> and it's really, it's very, it's very hard to see now. But it's just this teddy bear sitting there. And that actually I pulled from a Wingnut Wings World War One model kit. Um, I, I, I'd like to use really weird or really like, insanely collectible things in stuff just to like torque the brain <laughs> you know like one guy yelled I mean, at me because i used that i was like <laughs> I, well, I, yeah it's... i can't understand why anybody would I, I here's what i can tell you is we're, we're gonna we're gonna post pictures for everybody that you'll be able to see this uh in the in the feed while we're we're, we're gonna be talking over this but the detail that he mentioned in this is you could shoot this thing it, it, that's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. It's like it, yeah. George picked it. He didn't just make it and say, "Oh, it's kind of artsy," and I did that. No, when you're you're looking at these pictures right now, you could shoot this thing. It, it's got lighting. It's got all the stuff and the weathering. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, by working in with your friends from the RPF and doing the things that you've done, you have learned how the weather and age in the style of the ILMers of that yeah. era. So when you produce a piece, it's shootable. And it would it would yeah. come out like that. It's really funny. Like I I kind of have I haven't moved past it, but I've changed it up, and I've like I, I don't paint quite like the ILMers anymore, only because I like take it a little further, so it holds up to closer scrutiny. Um, ah. Like if you look at the originals, some of them are pretty scrappy because they're working under a deadline, and they're like, and and if you talk to those guys, they're not precious about the models. They're like, this was a filming miniature. It needed to be sure. on stage. It needed to do X, Y, and Z, and then we moved on to something else. And it later, was a production it piece, yeah, yeah. And later, if it becomes a holy relic, sure, you know, like then they're like, <laughs> then they're like, okay, that's weird, but okay. Um, but uh, but like, so like that that X wing, um, I built it for a friend, and uh, a friend of mine was saying, you know, I have a three D scan of his head. Uh, <laughs> if you want to make him the pilot, and I was like, weird sentence. <laughs> yeah 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 um 
and so it was originally going to be red four and i made a red four pilot which i've i got a picture of i can show you um and that's the that's the guy with the red helmet who goes like ah and when he explodes right, right. they all actually uh. go, ah. um <laughs> john d i think was his name in the film um but uh i was like yeah i'm gonna put his as a joke i'm gonna do that initially and then give him the figure and he saw that and he was like we had already decided that the red four pyro was going to be like the, the baseline for the paint job, but he didn't like the yellow canopy. So he was like, can you, and this is a rare case where I'm building it for someone just cause like he's a buddy and I'm like, all right, yeah, I, I need to like, I needed to do a build to make sure everything worked together. Like a kick. The yeah. Tires. The inception of it and the, and the purchasing yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of, yeah, this, was the, this okay. was the, yeah, it's make sure all the parts fit the way I wanted them to. Um, and they did, it was, which was also, you know, very gratifying. But um, he didn't like the yellowish canopy. He's like, can we make it gray? And I'm like, I'll paint it pink if you want, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is, this, is your, this is your thing. So I, I painted his head and I put uh, put it in there and he was just like, oh, it's me. And I was like, yeah. And he's just like, what if we like just went nuts and just like did like a unique, like let's, you know, Red 4 blew up in the Battle of Yavin. Who's to say the next Red 4 didn't look like this? And I was like, <laughs> right. oh, I get to I get to do something unique and fun. I was like, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because it's just Fantastic. so much more fun to go off script. So like it's got the Red 5 Barber Pole stripe on one on two of the cannons. You know, we were just like, it's like a greatest hits. Like put a blast mark there. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, accurate to nothing <laughs> except, <laughs> except like it's like nose and length and general vibe but like the the whole the what we call the butt plate like that whole like rear mm -hmm. detail cluster is like twice as detailed as uh, the filming miniatures were because it's the one twelfth part scaled down as a test essentially and now i've fallen in love with the extra detail so the next one i build will also have that so now i'm, I'm like you know because i want to make another one uh, I mean, so it sounds to me done. like this one could, even though it's a hodgepodge, could exist in that universe and fit in just fine. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it when you build this stuff long enough, you you get the you get the vibe, and it's pretty. I feel it's pretty easy to like hit that mark where it's like that looks like it's from Star Wars. Sure. Like, and you know it what's has interesting? Such a unique design language. And you know what's really interesting is like how you said your evolution of ILM uh, building has become way more like you painted a little harder because these were just kind of, you know, we're talking about a screen that was, you know, we had SD screens back in the day, at, you know, that was, you know, if something was in the background, it was blurred. Yeah, you're going to see it. But thinking about now, like if they shot it now, it would have to stand up to 4K scrutiny. Oh, so yeah. yeah, I think your yeah. evolution is dead on. Yeah, I, I'd like it to be. I mean, like the 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 guys who built the originals have seen them and said that's lovely and i'm like i'm good that's all you need like, <laughs> like, like yeah I'm, I'm done i can die done happy now. <laughs> yeah ex uh, yeah yeah i mean i i, I said to a uh, talking to a friend of mine um i was like you know I, I used to be hungry i used to have to prove something to myself and others and i'm like i'm at this weird creepy zen point where i'm like i don't have to prove anything to anybody including myself like i feel like i did way more than I set out to do. Like it's yeah. weird. And now I'm just like kind of having fun and like making stuff. <laughs> and that's why I think I, that's why I really love the sand crawler because it's something that you built where you were just like, you know what? What if? Yeah. And I think that's it. I mean, there's there's obvious um, I mean, from my point of view, the way that they were using the sand crawler in uh, you know, in the shots, how they were actually like running it. It was like a little RC car that they ran through the desert and stuff. Yeah. Of course, the elongated nose was going to present all sorts of problems, which is probably, you know, I, that's why I can guess. It's like they probably snubbed it a little bit just because yeah, of production, know. right? Yeah, yeah the, 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 the funny thing about that one, the one side's not finished at all and it only goes straight. Like it uh -huh. can't turn, which right. I always thought was kind of weird. And it was so overbuilt. Uh, it had a motorcycle battery in it and there was so much torque oh. that yeah, before, uh, I, think, I think it was Lauren who said uh, you could sit on it when it was just the wooden form before they put any, you know, breakable stuff on it. You could sit on it and you could ride it. And they used to be able to pop wheelies with it. Like, <laughs> get, all those guys that, were like- That photo exists like, somewhere. You know somebody took a picture of it back in the day. So you know a I photo hope, exists. I hope, yeah. I mean, like every once in a while, a photo will bubble to the surface. Like how, how right. is this picture? Like there's so much stuff. Oh, there's so my much gosh. material like still coming forward. And it's like, so cool. You know, it's it's funny that you say it's it's funny that's like 
these things that can be built um, will produce these kind of weird and cool moments and a production studio, things like that. Um, I just, oh my gosh, when that photo surfaces, we're going to come back to this and be like, Jason, look, uh, it's the uh, photo. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, you'll, you'll see it on Facebook if it shows up. Cause I'll be like, oh ah! <laughs> right. like so cool. You know, as a, as a guy that can just, you basically can build whatever you want. Um, and as all of us sitting here as collectors, what does a guy like you collect? Cause you can basically build whatever you want, but what do you actually go out there and collect? Like, like name three things you Okay. Yeah. Make. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, you can see it there. The, the barrel from Jaws. So, <laughs> um, I don't wait, know. Wait, 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 wait. The barrel from Jaws. Yeah. It's is... not like production used, but okay. So the original barrels that were made in the film are apparently exceptionally rare and go for a lot of money. Wow. And they're these giant pro poly polypropylene barrels that say born free on the bottom. Um, and okay. uh, <laughs> yeah, and born someone free. got one. So, so somebody, somebody had like a quantity of them that were unpainted. So there, I guess they were like black polypropylene um, with a blue screw on top. I guess that's important. Um, and I think that might've been from production and someone got their hands on one of them and made a mold and did a very small run in polypropylene like that mold was metal i think like it, it could <laughs> it must have cost so much money to make this thing like, <laughs> it is and it is indistinguishable from the original except they molded the the screw down like lids uh you know for the pour spout or whatever uh onto it so it like you can't unscrew them like that's right i guess that's how someone will will you know if they try to pass it off as a real barrel can like, you unscrew it a replica. <laughs> Right. Um, and I, I ran across it on Facebook some or somebody had sent me like, you probably are going to want one of these, you big nerd. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and, uh, and there was an option to buy one raw or to buy one finished. And he's like, I'll paint it yellow. I'll hit it with a chain. So it looks all beat to hell. Uh -huh. uh, there's metal straps and I'll tie the ropes. Right. And I was just like, do it all for me, dude. Like, like I rarely oh. will buy like something like a collectible, but I'm like with these hands and just to know, like, <laughs> I'd have to wait for the weather to be perfect to paint something like that big in an yeah. angle paint. Like, yeah. and in Maryland, yeah. it gets really muggy, like on a dime. So I was like, that's just, I, I got to wait six months. And it's going to kill me. You know, like I'm just, right. you do it, dude. Um, and that showed up and, and my wife was like, oh, great. Like, it's, it's a, Jason, it's a, it's a barrel. He's like, but it's the barrel. Yeah, it's a barrel. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a barrel. And it's right next to the TV so we can stare at it every night. I just think um, if a shark ever comes, we're ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, for what it has to be this you know, only one, you know, right. like, surely three. Um, <laughs> then oh we're in trouble. Goodness. We'll need a bigger boat. Um, so, yeah, the Jaws barrel, I don't know why. And it's, it's very, it's not polarizing, but like you can tell a Jaws fan when they come in the room and they're like, uh, 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 is, yep. Yep. and I'm like, yeah. And they're like, good God. <laughs> like that's like the last thing anybody thinks that I'd be it's, like. I, yeah. I, I always got to ask with, with Jaws in particular, I, I, I know the importance of the film and I know how kind of, um, I know more of the stories about the problems behind the scenes. Yeah. about that is that what draws you to it or just you know it was just the film itself that just Spielberg saw it as a kid there, right? i saw it as a kid and i couldn't go into the swimming pool like every kid <laughs> in the oh <laughs> you know like it was there, there was a visceral you know like oh my god shark thing and then it morphed into a just a my favorite movie isn't star wars it's either young frankenstein or high anxiety two mel brooks films only because they're like a favorite song. I will put them on like once every month or two. And it right. just, sometimes I don't even really pay attention to it, but they're memorized. Like Jaws, The Thing, Big Trouble in Little China, Star Wars Empire, and the Mel Brooks, those two Mel Brooks films are like just sure. playing simultaneously like an eight track in my head and it just jumps from track to track. And I'm constantly like <laughs> referencing them. You know, like I, my brother I and I can affliction. speak in... Yes. Yeah, my brother and I can speak in nothing but mu like movie quotes to each other in conversations like a weirdo. that and airplane and naked gun for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and now we watch it. It's it's we watch the thing when it snows every first snowfall. We'll watch mm. the thing and we watch uh, Jaws on the Fourth of July. And um, sure. <laughs> I'm excited that July is coming up. I'm like, yay, Jaws! <laughs> um, oh, bring out the barrel again. Yeah, <laughs> and, and now Life of Brian on Easter. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd be that's oh, that's a good idea. Um, now in the year 2021, it's also like a it's just it's lovely pacing. It's like a time capsule, like the cars and just you yes. know, Spielberg cinematography. Like it's yep. just a it's just a fun watch. Um, and there's just something about it that yeah. like it's uh, The Shining's one of those films too. Like that's in oh, there, like yeah. played in my like it's just you watch it so many times. Yeah. Like, okay, I'd be I'd be remiss if I didn't ask this because you mentioned Big Trouble in Little China. Any interest in building that Pork Chop Express? Oh, it, it's like a third <laughs> of the way there. Yeah. Oh, um, dang. Okay, so all right, so uh, through a buddy of mine, like I've hung out with Richard Edlund a, a fair amount over the years, um, and Richard did the his shop did the effects for it and <laughs> i got a whole photo survey of wow. the pork chop <laughs> wow. wow so i had a we we made i have decals made i started like making parts for it before 3d um hit my like toolbox and i've got like a whole slew of like extended fuel tank and the weird little step like i'm going nuts on this thing mm, oh um, and i'm gonna Solid. i gotta repattern i gotta repattern some stuff so i can do it like better in 3d um yeah i actually i'll send you pictures but i i have like the whole front <laughs> grill done where it says i think it says haul and ass and um i bought the swan um i think it's a swan uh hood ornament that's on some of those trucks i found right. one on etsy oh. for like 60 bucks and i had it through this <laughs> can and i shrunk it down to 124th or 5th or whatever and so that'll be on it it's nuts uh, yeah oh, oh yeah, my gosh i think truck. i'm pretty sure kevin's checking his bank account right now yeah i, I mean it, um, it's not that it's it, <laughs> even if i had the money i would have to come up with a rational explanation of why <laughs> so, i should there, there, there is a model way. kit there's a model kit of the truck that doesn't need a horrible amount of customization and it goes for about a hundred bucks on eBay ish. So you can get pretty far for what isn't that much insane, like money wise. Um, and Oh, the sleeper cab is the big, the big change. I'll, I'll send you some pictures. There's three vehicles I built. I have finished one. Uh, the pork chop express is the second and the third one I haven't even started, but the other two, I built the stair car from Arrested Development. Yes. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's, that. on, that's, on, that's on the website. I but it's the that. first. Facebook. It's Ugh. the first season stair car, and yeah. it changes two or three times within the season. And from second season on, it's a totally different car. I think they use like three different ones, but I liked that very first really crappy one. Um, so I built that, and then the third one is Little Mule Pepe from Romancing the Stone, which is just like a Ford Bronco yeah. with some extra stuff on it. I just want. I want a little <laughs> but that's you know that's that's no uh, that's the whole thing it's like it's what gets you excited to build yeah honestly yeah. you know yeah yeah and, and now just, and now with all the permission people have, of the made, people. people have made all of these i've seen pro shop express models i'm not forging any new ground on it but like yeah. i, I want to make it for myself for yeah. fun you know yeah. but it's it you know it's one of those things i think you have earned like you said earlier um i and what we kind of think is that you've earned a, a big spot there so a piece by you carries with it you know some grandioseness to you that know not to crazy <laughs> <laughs> it, it really it really does because i feel like i'm just the same dude making the same dumb crap i've always made but like i've just been doing it for a really long time i know like, man but honestly but then i do it, i do look at pictures of the older stuff and i'm like oh that's oh what was i thinking like that's, <laughs> i've gotten i have gotten better which is amazing motivation to get better in the future like right I would I would be sad if I knew that like I was at the top of my game like I know I can still like improve or change or whatever so that's yeah. that's what keeps me going. Well, speaking uh, of the future, like what what do you I mean? We already talked. Well, to hold you, on, you he's know, got two more to go. Oh. I want to know. Oh, I got two oh, more to go. Right, 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 right. Sorry. Right. Okay. Off the top of my head, and it's off the cuff, and it changes from like two hours ago when I was like thinking about my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the. Uh, I think it comes from Gary Kurtz's collection, but it is an unused uh, iron-on transfer of the the first Star Wars shirt, the crew shirt, which is the Star Wars. Whoa! Oh, right, right, not, right. This isn't it. This is a fan made a copy sure, of it. Sure, sure. But I've got. Oh, you can actually see it right there. No, you can see yeah. that. Yeah, that. Yeah, and it's and it's backwards, and you can get them. They're usually like. They're they're only ten dollars. No, they're like, like <laughs> they're like a hundred or one hundred and fifty if you're impatient or whatever. But they they float around out there, and and the that's paper's crazy. a little yellow. 
and you have to be careful that it's not the the fan club version, which I think says factors with a copyright. Mm. This is, this yeah, is a it. production, unused production piece, which I'm like, oh, so that's one. <laughs> and then the other thing, non-Star Wars, uh, it's a poster of the thing artwork by Drew Struzan, who, and he signed it. And they only made like a couple hundred and it, Mondo, I think, sold it. Maybe Bottleneck, but I'm almost positive it was Mondo. And I missed the run, so I had to buy it on the secondary market for $10. Oh, the um, original, wait, that's the original first run print? I guess. Of the poster? Okay. It's the, it's the poster art. They did two versions. One glows in the dark. This is not the glow right. in the dark one. But it has no writing. It's just the art of that like. Oh, and, and fantastic. Like, and it's yeah, signed it's so by Drew cool. Struzan. It's signed yeah. by yeah. Oh my Whoa. gosh. Yeah. So you see his sign, his signature from the artwork, and then he signed the print, and it's you know like a I don't know if it's a gicle or like a silk screen or something. So but I that wonder, was something where I was like, I gotta, I gotta do it. That's I'm just really thinking of cool, people man. in the audience right now, for why we're freaking out. We're all artists, okay. Yeah. And so for people out there that don't know, any cool movie poster from any cool movie ever yeah. was done by <laughs> Drew Struzan. <laughs> Like or is trying Indiana to copy Jones, his style, the really. Goonies, uh, yeah, you, know, you yeah. name it. I, a couple of years ago, I was at a friend's house, and he owns an insanely wonderful collection of real screen use stuff. He owns the Blade Runner gun. He owns a Ghostbusters wow. one proton pack. He owns like stuff that would make your heart stop. And the thing that I I almost like I might surpass because he let me hold the blade runner gun and i'm like oh, you know like, <laughs> like oh my god um the thing that i saw in his collection that like almost brought me to my knees was the original um gremlins poster art oh. of like the box you know, opening right, up right, right, right. yeah and it's it's the painting it's not like a poster he's got the art and i was like oh god I can't handle this. Wow. This so cool. And Hold he was up. like, he was like, that speaks to you. And I was like, that speaks to you. And he's like, oh yeah. Like, I mean, like that's going to Errol's video or Blockbuster or whatever you want to call it. Like, you know, like as a wow. kid or Wait, I, ha I have to ask the question because you brought up the Blade Runner gun. Uh, the, has Adam Savage met this person or talked oh, yeah. to this person? I'm, okay. Yeah, 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 Cause sure I, you know, that's his thing. He his that gun is his, you know, he's been trying to get that thing. Oh right yeah. For... Adam has like, like 12 versions, iterations of it. It's like gorgeous. Yeah. So as soon as you said that, like, I know he's talked to a lot of people because he tells the story I'm, every time. I'm a hundred percent positive. They've okay. probably hung out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure this Sorry, whole prop circle thing is you know, no, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's as, as big a, a world as this is, it's a small collecting oh, yeah. like group. Yeah. 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 As far as, as far as all that kind of stuff, even in entertainment industry, you get to work with the same people over and over again. It never fails. Yeah. And yeah. You, they're just on your production. You're like, Oh, Hey, I haven't seen you in years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. But that, all that's those, oh. all those like sayings are true. Like, uh, be nice to the people on the way up because you'll see them on the way down like as everybody knows everybody you know yeah everybody really does i mean that that last one the poster just with without the fonts and everything in it that's that's a really great collectible it's man cool. like that's yeah. that's super cool to look at and everything uh, uh, and, and um, not mind. not that we've had anybody over for the last 10 years with this covid thing <laughs> but when right. when somebody would come in or if they would just see it in the background you know like because it is right there um yeah. you know the like if they're a thing fan they're like oh oh, oh isn't yeah. it and i'm like right oh, and then we're it? both yeah. like ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's very exciting oh that's what i love a conversation piece yeah those and, are the best and, aren't they yeah and and uh and it's funny like i'll build something like the macquarie sandcrawler somebody if somebody wanted that thing, I'd be like, yeah, of course. Like if we agree on, you know, like a, a, a compensation. Kind of <laughs> um, yeah, like, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm honored whenever somebody asks, you know, like, can I buy that? And I'm like, sure. And they're like, how about a dollar? And I'm like, mm. sorry. <laughs> a dollar. You know, like, That'd be great. Oh, isn't yeah. That's the I kind mean, of the feeling the, of you know a fine I mean. artist. Yeah, a fine yeah, artist yeah. does a painting yeah. and they hang it in their home and somebody comes in. I love that. And then it's, this is just a different medium. I'm sorry. It's just, you, yeah, you know, yeah, it's it's, it's it's assemblage sculpture is honestly right. what it is. But like, right. I'd, I'd sell it in a heartbeat. But the but the thing poster, I'd be like, from my cold dead hands, dude. So you go find your own. <laughs> you know, like it's so dumb, right. and it's not. Right. And it wasn't horrifically expensive, but it was just like that. Every time I see it, like I'm like, yeah. you know, like it brings it, it joy. Also, I can see it from the couch. So if I'm watching TV, I can just go like that and be like, hi. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if, if it brings joy. 
Well, if it brings joy, it sparks it, joy. It sparks, it sparks joy. Yeah. Space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, like you were speaking of the future, like what are you working on these days? We heard about the, uh, I may have jumped the gun with the pork chop express model, but yeah. What do you got going on these days? Uh, I have to finish the Tabana gas mine, which is another one of those, like, well half, like most people are like, why are you building that? And I'm like, Whoa, I can't why not? not? Um, part of it was me being sarcastic, like I'm building something from the special editions, ha <laughs> ha, you know, like because they get so much, they get so much hate online. Um, but it was just, it's an excuse to build something from a painting where it has one angle and I get to flesh out a whole universe. And like the Jawa sand crawler, I really love making a little, like I made all the little buildings, and it's just like I get to play like in a little baby world, like it's just very soothing and zen to like put all the parts down. Um, like it's almost meditative. Um, and I, the reason I'm so into like putting stuff inside little holes and stuff is because uh, <laughs> that you can like be rewarded for looking like underneath the tires or whatever. Oh, sure. um, right. Because um, so like the, the <laughs> yeah, like the um, the stair car has brake lines. You know, like why? But it's there. Um, <laughs> it, it, as a kid, we had a Christmas ornament that was like a like a blown glass thing and there was a hole in it you could look in and there was like a rabbit with like a carrot or something and as a kid I was oh, like, I remember a, those there's a world in there yeah it was like a Fabergé yeah. egg for normal uh, people some yeah. of those had little kaleidoscope pieces on the side you yeah, can like yeah, spin yeah, them yeah. Mm -hmm. those yeah yeah I, I totally cool. get that wonderment kids Just today don't have, with their Nintendos yeah with um, their Nintendos <laughs> we, we, yeah. oh my god that's what those are that's amazing oh these are all cartridges and this yeah. is like only like 10 percent of the collection yeah. so it's just as a quick yeah. as a quick aside i have to say like the two things that have emotionally gotten me through this pandemic are this local thai place <laughs> like <laughs> because for some reason thai food really take you know it, it, it 20 minutes later it, it's still intact oh, yeah like reconstituted thai food oh hell yeah i can't get burger i'll eat it cold in the morning and then yeah I'm like start my day solid um <laughs> i feel the same uh i just i had it today funny enough but um like burgers and fries get soggy and weird and like yeah uh, after yeah um but uh the other thing is animal crossing <laughs> oh my god like my wife and i are like they're legitimately our friends like i will go into blathers museum on in animal crossing and walk around like the area where all the butterflies are or whatever and i'm like it's like i'm in a museum like i'm in it speaks to you i get that <laughs> oh my dude. god it's so weird dude yeah i'm like i you know i i go gardening on, you know, like, ridiculous. oh i know uh, i have a couple friends i've lost to animal crossing a couple times and it's just it becomes i mean it, it speaks to the whole collector thing honestly because favorite, you just get into a zone this is something i'm working on an ava uh oh yeah i have to i have to finish her it's my wife's favorite character wait so. a minute are you doing that to the size of the amiibos like these are these scaled oh, to it? these size no i'm what? not is sure it? I don't know. There was a file online. I'm sorry, the webcam. There we go. Um, there was a file online I grabbed and then I modified it because, okay. you know, it could scalloped be. cowl. I was like, that's incorrect. I have to fix it. <laughs> it could be because the base, because the base models of these are always taken. You know, they have the base for the, the this, little this chip is, that sits yeah, on it. This is a resin yeah. print. Like, yeah. I don't know, there's a file floating around that I grabbed. Um, they might be getting shortcut. it from the files or anything, but like, they might. Yeah. yeah. There's not enough Animal Crossing room is really what i want to tell so any more like mcquery pieces maybe a cloud city companion oh, um, <laughs> oh, oh i know something um the the no. cloud the um i oh, i do want to make the 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 mcquery twin pod cloud car where the guys like it's like a cloud car kind of curved and they're like these little like garden gnome looking dudes in it uh. with like big fins i want to make that <laughs> i want to make uh one of the proto atsts from empire not the one that ended up in rebels clone wars okay. um oh, oh now you're speaking you're kevin's yeah, language yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah um i i mean i do want to make it all oh of course um so there is a guy who made a macquarie x-wing and it's a resin kit that people have bought and i've i've even built one oh, um yeah, yeah yeah but he he made the one from the the macquarie painting right right a couple joe johnson sketches of an x-wing that are sort of an in-between phase where there's like a p51 p51 bubble canopy um and it has a little different i want to make that one like that'll be fun 
Do oh, it. Man, you have so much to go. <laughs> I do. I do. That's a, well, and that's, I was using I my joked, emperor I, voice on I, you. I, I joked with my friends. I was like, I think I started building this stuff because we were starting to run out of stuff to make. There's only so many Y wings and X wings you can make before you get like kind of tired or jaded and you're like, mm. yeah. but um, I mean, not really. But I always come back to the same, you know, like I'll still, I want to build an X wing. I want to build another Y wing. I'll repattern the Y wings with a tie. Mm -hmm. Just to Wait, make them I want to mention the one thing that's un, uh, floating in limbo, the ion cannon. Oh, it's oh like, my god, I gotta finish the ion cannon. Yeah, it looks so <laughs> good. Even where so, he, oh, yeah. So the first thing I gotta do, I, I I made a um a mini rig in one sixth scale, the PDT8, which is that dopey looking sled that the droids sit in and vertical Shit. takeoff and land. That was my favorite mini rig as a kid for some inexplicable reason, and that was built all hand done way before 3d and i at some point with my like modelers add i just like put it aside and worked on something else and just never got back to it so i wanted to finish that but i'm building uh, in a rare building something for somebody uh, and or forest ranger in one six scale for the guy that designed it so how can mm, you wow you know, just, whoa yeah. hey he did all the mini rigs he worked at kenner and that was his favorite one and i'm like how can I not do that? You know, like that's like that's the coolest thing. So I got to do wow. that in the Ion Cannon. The Ion Cannon I put aside because I got scatterbrained on something else. I think I wanted to finish the X-wing because that was like a three-year slow build kind of thing. Um, but the Ion Cannon I visited the archives like two or three years ago, uh, and wow. I got to see it. I've been there a bunch, but that was like the most recent time that I've been there was after a hiatus of like six years. And I had learned so much when I went back, I was like, I had, I brought grown pieces with me to like hold up because mm -hmm. I didn't know if they would let me, I couldn't take pictures. I couldn't like measure anything because of just, you know, policies with, in place now, which is mm -hmm. fine. Um, it's their, you know, show. Like the first couple of times I went there, I could have like, I did put Boba Fett's helmet on, you know, I was like, oh. um, <laughs> hey, look at me. It wasn't the screen used. Oh, it was the pre pre pro two. We thought it was the hero. I got a lot of guff from some guys because we misidentified it because I didn't know. Because that's who you guys are. <laughs> Sorry, we tried our best, guys. Max would know. Uh, to this day, some I still get shade every once in a while. Like you didn't even know that it was a red helmet. I'm like, you're right. I didn't. Um, uh. They'll so, never let you live it down. Yeah, well, just gonna, like, the work in progress. I'm not haunted by it in the least. Um, oh, are yeah. incredible. But it, that model is is uh, a little little rough now, so it's kind of hard to see what's going on. I was hoping to identify some more stuff. I verified essentially just by holding up my parts that what I built pretty much matches the original mm -hmm. gun. Um, so I need, yeah, I need to get back on that. But I think like conservatively 30 to 40 percent of the detail on the ball is going to be a best guess best faith effort oh. and the second i finish it someone will find photos from 79 that shows the whole thing in crystal clear detail and i'll, I'll see exactly what i did wrong <laughs> <I'll be> like, <laughs> that, it happens every time i built it that blade runner blimp i built right that blade runner blimp and it was the, the, like the week i finished doug trumbull launched his website and there was this beautiful side view of it that i didn't have that shows this curve that I, we got a little wrong and i was like i just don't want to live. i was <laughs> oh. like oh my god yeah what happens That's, when you're trying to research these things and just it happens you have pads, to anticipate that yeah artistic license yeah <laughs> right yeah yeah, it doesn't keep me up at night. It's like, I'll do better <laughs> next time, I guess. Um, but yeah, the Iron Cannon is something I definitely want to get back to. Absolutely. It, it looks beautiful so far. I, I mean, it's I in had, a rough form, but it's beautiful. Yeah. On that trip, I had coffee with Ease, the guy that built the original. Um, he doesn't know me at all, but through one of the guys, you know, that worked there, he was just like, you know, Jason's building this, you know, he, here's the intro. And he's like, I'll meet you for coffee, at, you know, at lunchtime or whatever. And I'm like, great. So we talked for like a half an hour, 45 minutes, super nice guy. Uh, he thought I was a little like crazy for making it. And he's like, wait, what? And I told him about like the mechanism we're working on. Cause the thing, it, it's like a real complicated mechanism where it's a ball and it's a three pedal hatch uh -huh. and the gun is completely inside the hatch. And then it, the, the, the whole gun assembly pushes out and the pedals open up. And that's what you see in the film. It telescopes like, out? Like it, it telescopes it... out. And then when it fires, as you see in the film, there's a recoil, but then there's a uh -huh. secondary recoil. So that right. whole thing has to go in, but it also has to work independently of each other, which is wow. for me something I'm like, somebody else with 
experience and servos figure that out. And that we're that's another thing we're working on where I'm just going to throw money at it until somebody <laughs> helps work. you. Somebody will help yeah. you. <laughs> somebody will help me. They always do. It's very, yeah. very awesome that the internet can connect people like that. Um, <laughs> but he was like, I, it was just a screw mechanism, dude. He's like, you're way overthinking it. And I was like, cool. Oh, well, good. <laughs> like, well, right. I'm glad okay. I overthought the whole thing. Well, well the funniest part about that whole thing is I brought my parts and I showed it to him. And he's like, I machined that in acrylic. How did you make this? And I said, I 3D printed it. And he was like, wait, you printed this? This is a print? And he's like, what kind? And I was like, SLA, like resin. He's like, where? And I said, I in my house. And he's like, they have, you have a machine in your home that makes... Like he's a 3D artist now, and he was right. just like, yeah. He's like, tell me about. He's like, I don't stop talking about Star Wars and tell me more about this printer. So like, we <laughs> talked about that for a while, which was pretty awesome. Like the first time we, my friends and I had met Richard Edlin, we went to his office and he sat down and regaled us uh, with tales for two hours about the history of Leica cameras, and we're all like, we're dying inside because like behind him are Oscars and Emmys and like the coming to your galaxy this summer Mylar poster. And like, you know, all this like stuff. And we're like, talk about Star Wars. But you know, he's, like, <laughs> he's, he, he's got to run out of camera history at some point. And it's like, no, he likes cameras, dude. Buckle up. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. I mean, it's just organically what happens, happens. It's pretty cool. Man, Jason, it's it's been like an absolute blast talking to you this whole time. It, you got, it sounds like you got stories for days on this stuff. It's I mean, pretty nuts. Yeah. yeah. Well, for people that want to get in touch with you, you know, Facebook, Twitter, you know, you have a YouTube channel. I seem to right? be on the internet a fair amount. <laughs> How, yeah, where can want... people reach you? Uh, yeah, there's there's a link on my website to uh, my email, and I I will get the email. So, and mm -hmm. I will try to reply in a timely manner. <laughs> like, um, and you have a YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Um. I, how would you find it? Um. I should hunker, probably put a link on my in website. the bunker. <laughs> Hunker in the bunker. Yeah, if you, look, if you look for Hunker in the bunker, you can see me emotionally ride out the entire pandemic. Uh, I started filming a video a day, and I got to like, I think I got to like 50 days in, and was like, I can't do this every day. This is insane. Um, but I did get to 100, and then I did like six or seven where I was waiting to be vaccinated, and it was called waiting to be vaccinated. And yep. then, uh, and then I got vaxxed, and uh, I did one starting on the Endor Forest Ranger. And then I got busy with a project I'm still working on, but I'm under NDAs, so I can't talk about it. But you'll see it in a couple months. <laughs> um, when I go dark, model-wise, it's because I'm working on something really cool that I'm not allowed to talk about, which is pretty neat. Um, that's, uh, dude, that's, that, you know, NDA kind of stuff. It's always real great when uh, we see some of our, like, favorite artists or creators when they're like, I haven't heard from him in four or five months probably means they're going to be you know premiering yeah. something really good real soon yeah i'm i'm underneath the laundromat making meth or whatever yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, once I'm, again that's jasoneatonstudio.com breaking bad guys it's just breaking bad I'm, that's all it is um jason yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah jason we i thank you so much for being on uh, the for very first me. episode of collectopolis i mean we're hoping to have you back on here again because honestly Absolutely. we could talk your ear off and you could talk our ear off i mean you're such uh you're such an uh, interesting and amazing guy uh i'm very humbled to hear any of that thank you <laughs> <laughs> just a guy that likes to cook has cats and builds models man that's that's it. And has a jaws barrel. It has a jaws barrel. That's actually, yeah, that should I guess that should be at the, the front of it. Yes. But most importantly, I have a, I have a yellow barrel. <laughs> I actually have an orca too, like uh with yep. li oh, little with little mini barrels. Um a friend of mine made that. Yeah, that was pretty cool. But right. yeah, thank, thank you. So thank you very much for having me. Yeah, yeah, really. no problem. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jason. Hey, thanks for joining us on our very first episode of Collectopolis. We'll be back next time with some more adventures in collecting. Please check out the rest of our shows on the Skywalking Network, like... Classic Marvel Star Wars Comics, Talking Apes, Neverland Clubhouse, Resilient Squadron, Totally Tell Me Everything, and of course, Kevin's other podcast, the Max FX Podcast as well as our flagship show, Skywalking Through Neverland. You can find them all at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. Please let us know what you thought of the show in the YouTube comments below. And please like and subscribe to the Skywalking Network. 
Hey, thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next time on Collectopolis. Collectopolis.